Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, as we get ready for prayer this morning, uh, I want to remember Don Wyman in prayer. I spoke with the Wymans um, Friday afternoon, and uh, she had said that they would be here this morning, but I, I told her, I said, I totally understand if you're not in church Sunday. She said, oh, well, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll probably be there. So they're not here today, but that's all right because he's come through quite a bit on uh, Friday. They did reach a spot uh, in his heart that was unpassable, so they had to bypass it. And everything went successful. She was a little worried, and uh, but he was napping Friday afternoon, and he uh, seemed to be doing okay. He came through everything just fine. So, so remember the Wyman's in prayer. Your daughter's traveling today. Daughter and son-in-law. Going from up. They're going to Hillary. They're going from New Hampshire to, and they have to go to Tampa, Florida because Des's grandmother, my four year old grandma, is dying. So, travel mercies. <laughs> yeah, do some quarantine when you get back from that. So. Yeah, yeah, Anybody else this morning? Anybody you'd like to remember in prayer? Judy Brown, Don Wyman's daughter. Judy, yes. Remember Judy in prayer? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. If you're joined with uh, family today and you've been quarantined with them for weeks and months, you should join hands with them in prayer today. Appreciate you coming out for worship this morning. Let's bow our heads. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this chance to come to you in prayer and to lift our hearts. Lord, we thank you for listening to us. No matter where we're at, no matter what we're dealing with or going through, you're right there. Thank you for this time to lift our hearts and our requests. We pray you'll be with the Wyman family today. Be with Don in this time, dear Lord. Thank you for a successful surgery and for bringing him through this thing okay. We pray about recovery and we just pray that he'll be able to get back to the life he enjoys living. We lift his daughter Judy to you as well. We pray you'll touch her and help her in this time. It's a delicate time. It always bothers us when we get those diagnoses and we're just worried about what can be done. And just pray for peace and comfort for Judy in this time, dear Lord. I lift Tiffany to you today. We pray as their family travels from a place where there hasn't been a lot of cases of coronavirus down to a place where it seems to be everywhere. Pray that you'll keep them safe, help them to make good decisions, bring them back home safe and sound, dear Lord. Dear Father, we come together as your people today. We come together as those who want to worship you and praise you, as those who want to walk with you and talk with you. 
remember your first disciples, how they came to you and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. In 2020, we still want to know how to pray. So we come to these words that were taught to us. We join our voices together as we remember our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Look around the room, wave at somebody today. Say, God loves you. God loves you. Thank you. Right. Thank you for being faithful in your offering. There are offering plates in the back if you need to drop your offering there or mail it into the church. Pray to praise you all and thank you for uh, being faithful in this time. And, uh, P.O. Box is P.O. Box 86 in Glenford, 43739. We're going to take communion at this time. It's the first Sunday of the month. Uh, if you didn't get a cup, they're in the basket in the back there right when you come in the door. And I invited you to bring your own bread because these wafers are not the most tasty things uh, in the world. So if you threw a couple pieces of bread into a Ziploc baggie and tossed it in your purse, that is totally fine. And uh, I'm going to remember what Jesus has done for us in this time of the coming to the upper room with his disciples. They had one last meal together. And at the beginning of the meal, Jesus took bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat. And at the end of the meal, he lifted the cup. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for the sins of many. Take and drink, and as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for these times to remember. It helps us to stop and pause and to think about what you have done, how you've worked in our lives, how you have moved in our church and our families, how you have touched us. You have brought calm and still and healing. And we think about the hard times as well. We remember how you've walked with us and talked with us through through those rough parts. We thank you for being right there. Maybe we're going through a rough part right now in our lives. We thank you for walking with us through it. We thank you for your love to us. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. You have a special selection you'd like to play for us this morning. Good deal. woman when cooking a pork roast always cut off both ends
ends of the roast before cooking. When asked why she did that, that's the way she learned it from mom. She called her mother and asked why pork roast was cooked in that manner with cutting off both ends of the roast. Her mom told her that in those days they had a really small oven and that was the only way a large roast would fit in the stove. And the woman said, oh. Why do we do what we do the way we do it? There are two words in this message today that I'd like you to hold on to, and that is tradition and remembering. Those two words lay before us all that we do and why we do it. The scripture I have on my heart and mind comes from 1 Corinthians 11, as Paul explains the why and how of communion to his Corinthian audience. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. Taking the moment today to remember. I could preach like Paul wrote. Paul was very in touch with what he experienced and understood about Christ. He then wanted to pass that experience along to his readers and listeners. For, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. What is Paul passing along? He passes along the tradition that was taught to him. The first four verses in our passage read pretty much like the Gospels read, almost word for word what either Jesus said or did with the disciples as they broke bread during the Passover meal in the upper room. That's tradition. Why are you cutting the roast like that for? It's just the way my mom always did. How many of us, if asked or approached, would explain communion to someone in a similar manner or anything in your lives. You've raised kids down through the years. Some of you still are raising kids. I'm sure they've come to you at some point and, Dad, why are you, why are you doing it like that for? Mom, why are you making that that way for? What we share with them is tradition. Folks might come in and they might ask us in the midst of the church service, why do you folks eat that bread and juice like that during church? I don't know. Preacher calls us down front, we eat it. It has something to do with Jesus eating with the disciples in the upper room thing. In other words, it's tradition. It's what we've always done. But the question actually cuts deeper. I don't just want to know what you do, I want to know why you do it. And that's where we struggle. Could we answer that question for someone? The lady in the story with the roast when asked simply recalled that it was always done the way her mother had done it. For many of us, that's how we would most likely explain things about our lives if asked. My dad always took us to eat at that restaurant. My mom always hung her clothes on these lines. My aunt always baked her pies this way. My uncle always took us fishing to this place. 
should be pertinent to us to find out why they did what they did in the way that they did it. I'm big into family trees and ancestry work on my family lines. I've been on the websites and I've driven around this great state of Ohio researching and piecing things together, but I don't just want names and dates. It's frustrating how many websites just give you the, the basic info. 12, 10, 10, 12 years ago when I started, it's amazing how far we've come in just that short amount of time, how much more info we have now. But when I started 12 years ago on my family tree, it was frustrating, you know, just a name, a date, no more information than that. I wanted to know the why and how when things happened. I wanted to know more than just a simple story of birth and death. Paul's Paul isn't content with just retelling the story as it was told to him. He is driven to take it a little further. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. It's not a matter of just going through the motions and just doing it because I told you to eat the bread and I told you to peel the cup open and drink it. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. Do we understand why we're taking this bread? Do we understand why we are drinking from this cup? In a deeper context of the last few verses of this passage this morning, Paul wants them to examine the sin of their lives. Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Wait a minute, you say. How does sin tie in with this whole thing? It behooves us to seek out the answer to what do we remember? Okay, I remember the church membership class. I remember getting baptized, I remember standing down in front of the congregation, I remember being allowed to take communion after that. The, the, the denomination I grew up in, they wouldn't let you take communion in the church until you had done church membership class and you had become a member of the church and then you could be served communion. There were a lot of Sundays growing up until I was 14 years old that I had to just pass the plate, pass me, you know. Tried to stick a hand in there and grab something, Dad, and go. <laughs> Not time yet. If you've been a, a UMer all your life, then maybe you've been taking communion all this time, even before church membership. We have an open communion table. I've served communion to plenty of little kids down through the years. So then the moment comes when you do join the church, and then you, you're confronted with the question, so what's different about this now? Upon examining our lives, Paul wants his readers to ask the question, do you know Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you asked him to come into your life? Have you asked him to forgive you of your sins? <clears throat> we looked at the Laodicean church just a couple weeks ago. Jesus is at the door of their heart, and he's knocking. Whoever will open the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. We do have an open table in the United Methodist Church. That means anyone can come. Anyone is free to take the bread and the wine and join in our celebration. But do we understand what we're celebrating? Have we taken the time to understand what it is we're doing here around the table? When I ask, what do you remember, too many of us drop off into tradition. We remember that we have always done it this way and that we were raised to do it this way. But remembering takes on the subject of why. Well, let's see, I remember some scripture about Jesus breaking bread with his disciples. 
Okay. I remember it has something to do with the cross, I think. All right. Let me stop you there. Have you ever accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you asked him to come into your heart and life? And I'm amazed when people say, I don't know if I ever have. I know I've been sitting here in these pews for a number of years. I know I went through church membership class when I was a kid. I know I've been giving my money to this church for as long as I can remember. Okay, let me phrase it to you this way. What do you remember about Jesus? I don't know. I stood down front after being baptized. I was asked the big question, do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God? How did you answer? Well, I said yes, but I'm still not sure what the question meant. What didn't you understand? Well, what does it mean, Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God? I've heard many a conversation like this one. Even people who have had the tradition of going to church for years, and they still don't know it in their own hearts about the saving and redemptive work of our Lord simply been told to them for years that this is what they were supposed to believe this is what they were supposed to do and many a person nods their head in approval does what they're told how many of us need to make that phone call and ask our mother why did we do it that way for how many of us need to hear the story laid out for us in the startling realization under the insightful oh Why did Dad always take us to eat at that restaurant? Well, you see, that's where he and Mom met for the first time. That's why he likes to go back there and eat at that place. Why had Mom always hung her clothes on these lines? Well, you see, this was Grandma's house at one time, and these were the first lines that they could afford to put up. Why did Aunt so-and-so always bake her pies this way? Well, you see, her family was from Ireland and they used certain spices. Why did Uncle so-and-so always take us fishing to this place? Well, you see, he caught this seven-pound catfish right here that one time and he always comes back to this spot. It's the what and the why. Why do we do what we do? God sent his one and only son into this world to die for our sins in our place. Our most familiar verse of scripture says it all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you have everlasting life? Do you believe in Jesus Christ. When I ask, what do you remember? It's not just a recalling of tradition I'm looking for. Do you remember what Christ has done for you? It's personal. It's a recollection of everything you remember about what God has done for you in your life. The salvation he provides in the name of his one and only son. The provision he has shown to you in your family, the guidance he has given to light your path, the healing he has brought to your mind, soul, and body, and the list goes on. Paul wanted to pass along to his Corinthian readers the realization that this supper they were partaking was not just some sloppy potluck feast with all the trimmings. That's kind of what it was in the Corinthian culture. Many of them had come out of these temples where they were worshiping these false gods, Athena, Zeus, all these things. They're coming into the church. They're brand new. They're babes in Christ. They haven't been doing this very long. Paul was raised in religious tradition and comes to know Christ. So Paul has a very good grip on how things are supposed to be. He comes in and it's well known in the Corinthian church that this Last Supper thing looks like a sloppy potluck feast. And there's not much remembrance. There's not much taking of time to remember what Christ has done. 
hope we realize today that Christ has died for our sins. When we approach the table, we take some bread. Jesus wanted his disciples to think about his body. They would see with graphic realism in just a few days how his body would be broken and beaten. <coughs> they would take that bread and dip it in a cup of wine. Jesus wanted his disciples to think about his blood. When they saw Jesus carrying the cross and being nailed to it, they would see how much blood he lost pay the price for our sins. They would remember their feet being washed in that upper room. They would remember the last three years of walking with him. They would remember the many healings, the crowds, the demons chased out of people, tables overturned in the temple. They would remember him appearing to them after he died and was laid in the tomb. They would remember seeing him ascend through the clouds, going back to the Father. He would pass along to his followers all they would need in order to hang on to their faith in him. And so the question still beckons. What do you remember? Jesus said, do this in remembrance. Stand with me as we enjoy the music to our last hymn this morning. He's a wonderful Savior. like 
to try to get that implemented and started in the next week or so. So if something's wrong with that, what's in the newsletter, call me or email me or text me or whatever. But if I don't hear from you, I'm going to assume it's all okay. We, uh, I don't think we're missing anything in the food pantry at all. We took a big shipment in on Thursday. I was out here Thursday afternoon in this pantry in the morning. I was out here Thursday afternoon. Michael was here. And I uh, can't remember what his name is that goes and gets stuff for the pantry. He, uh, he and his wife uh, brought a big ship of stuff in. We carried stuff in. I don't think we're missing anything down there at the moment. So I took that slide out this morning. But uh, after this Thursday, maybe we'll need some things. But at the moment, we're good. So any other announcements, anything?